Hello and welcome to my first ever video game review. For this occasion, I'm going to review the very first game I ever beat. That would be Sonic the Hedgehog for the Sega Genesis. Of course, if you're not from North America, that would be the Sega Mega Drive. So here's the classic intro from back in the day. Ah yes, look at that view. Wait. I don't remember this being in Sonic. What happened to all the water? What happened to Sonic's eyes? What's with that creepy grin? It looks like Sonic in hell. Wow, this is totally badass. Let's play. Okay, the classic Green Hill Zone. Everything seems completely normal now. Whoa! I got teleported to this crazy world. Oh shit, I can't kill any of the enemies. What? Each ring I collect subtracts a ring? I guess it's best to avoid them, but sometimes they are pretty hard to avoid. But what's this? That evil Sonic who took over the title screen is chasing me? Run! Come on, I'm Sonic here! Why can't I outrun him? Fuck! Okay, let's try again. Maybe there is something else I'm supposed to do. Okay, so running didn't work. I think I should fight him. I don't care that he has blood red eyes and could be the spawn of some sonic devil. I'm gonna kick his ass. Hey, why can't I hit him? Come on, you creep, be a man, let's fight! Okay, he's close now. I hit him. Oh, what? He still killed me. I should have known. If I can't kill any of the robots in this world, how can I kill him? What do these modder boxes do here? <gasps> I'm back in beautiful Green Hill Zone, and you damn badniks are dead! Oh damn, that monster transformed me back. Fuck, I lost all my lives at the first level of the game. Okay, time to get serious. Let's go. Okay, I made it to Act 2 this time. Oh shit, I can't beat the stage if I'm in hell? Well, what do you expect? It's hell. Let's get back up there. Oh no, I can't. And, and since there is no spin dash in Sonic 1, I can't charge up. That's not fair. You're the one who brought me here. Ha, <laughs> you got glitched out. Let's get the monitor box this time. Yes, beat it. You've got to be kidding me. When I face Dr. Robotnik, I still get transported to hell. And I face an even more evil version of him who can't die. Well, at least if I hit him enough, he drops a monitor box, but it sure makes this boss take much longer and make it all the more important when you don't get hit. Well, I can't seem to beat this part in Marvel Zone, so I'm just going to run out of lives here.
you know, it's really rude to stare, right? Well, just in case you hadn't figured it out, that is not the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Instead, I played a ROM hack called An Ordinary Sonic ROM Hack. Well, that name is partially correct. It has all the original stages, but everything else about it is completely out of the ordinary. I was playing a newer version, by the way, where every first enemy you kill in the real world gives you an extra life, or every time you first score points in the real world, you get extra life. In the original version, that's impossible. You don't get extra lives that way, so you get a lot more game overs. Here is the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, I don't have the original Sega Genesis cartridge, but this should work just as fine. Sonic Mega Collection on Nintendo GameCube. This is an incredible game. It blew everyone away. In fact, the very first video game I ever played is Super Mario World. But I was so passionate about playing Sonic the Hedgehog that I beat that game first. Not only that, I beat Sonic the Hedgehog multiple times before beating a single Mario Brothers game. That says a lot because Mario games are really easy except for the lost levels. Sonic the Hedgehog still holds up today. While the spin dash wasn't invented until Sonic 2, it's still easy to pick up speed in this game. Now the classic Mario games are games that many people would say are the best platformers ever. The greatest classics. But what Sonic does that Mario doesn't besides run really fast is have better level design. The level design in Sonic the Hedgehog is superior even to the level design of Super Mario World which came out the same year on the Super Nintendo. Each level in Sonic has multiple routes you can take to progress. I mean, look at even early on, Green Hill Zone. You can go on top of the hills, you can take this middle route here, or you can smash through the wall down here and progress that way. All Mario games back then had a very linear way of progressing. While some Mario levels did have alternate routes, they weren't as alternate as Sonic, if that makes any sense to you. I also like the bosses better. Mario games have decent bosses, but man, they are easy bosses. Usually they take only three hits to be defeated. Dr. Robotic, on the other hand, takes eight hits. Anyways, the goal of this game is obviously to get to the end of each level and uh, defeat Dr. Robotic and free animals. Peta would love this game. Playing as a heroic hedgehog, freeing animals from robots in giant containers, Mario's an animal killer, but not Sonic. Now, I don't mean to bash Mario. Mario is great and Sonic definitely took some inspiration from him, but so has pretty much any other platformer. But Sonic does take it to a whole new level. Now let's talk about zones and bosses. So first we have the classic Green Hill Zone. Dr. Robotic has a big wrecking ball that you must avoid while trying to hit him. Then there is Marble Zone, which is a fortress with some lava and these caterpillars, which you have to hit in the head. Hit anywhere else? and you get hurt. Robotic flies a machine that drops fire. Makes sense. Then there is Spring Yard Zone, full of things that bounce you around and are somewhat annoying sometimes, but still fun. Robotic tries to stab you with a spike and break down the bridge you are standing on while he's at it. Then there is Labyrinth Zone, where the most terrifying music in video game history plays. The music that tells you that you are about to fucking drown. Unlike Mario, Sonic can't swim and he can't breathe underwater either. Get these air bubbles and you'll be fine. The boss here is hardly worth mentioning. You don't really actually fight him. Starlight Zone has a beautiful soothing song and just looks nice, but the enemies here are kind of a pain. Bombs you can't destroy and are often put in rows so you have to dodge multiple explosions. Balls with spiked balls spinning around and you can't attack it without getting hurt yourself. The boss here is interesting. There are two ways to attack him. Either launch a bomb into him or have that bomb launch you into him. Scrap Brain Zone is when the game actually starts to get really hard. Now if you've played as much as I have, you'll get through this no problem. But there is no denying the impact of this zone. Buzz saws. Fire, caterpillars, pigs launching bombs, 
platforms over cliffs that spin, and Act 3 is back to underwater in what looks like a gray version of Labyrinth Zone. Beat that and you go to Final Zone and face one of the most terrifying final bosses in classic video games. Robotnik tries to crush you and electrocute you. You don't want to get crushed, but you need him to make his machine work so you can actually hit him. And without rings, those electric balls kill you in one hit. Once you beat him, you beat the game. But there is one thing. If you don't get all six Chaos Emeralds, yes, there are only six in this game, Robotnik laughs at you at the end, letting you know what you missed. You have to complete Act 1 or Act 2 of a zone with 50 or more rings to get a giant ring to appear and jump in it to go to a special stage. These special stages can be pretty challenging. Being how long it has been since I played this game, it took me multiple playthroughs to get all six emeralds. It was insane because I had failed on some special stages and I finally got the last Chaos Emerald on Starlight Zone. Technically, you could get the last Chaos Emerald on Scrap Brain Zone Act 1, but being how it's almost impossible to have very many rings when you get to the end of that act, I pretty much got the last Chaos Emerald on the final chance I could get it. And you get reward with a better ending. Sonic summons the Chaos Emeralds, and then the flowers bloom at Green Hill Zone. And then when you see Dr. Robotnik at the end, he's pissed because he has nothing to show for his quest to dominate this land. Well, that's the original Sonic the Hedgehog on Sega Genesis. But there actually were two more Sonic games that came out in 1991. Now I'm going to do a review of the Game Gear version. Now, I don't have a Game Gear. I never had one. So the only way I can play this is on uh, Sonic Adventure Director's Cut for the Nintendo GameCube. Once you unlock 20 emblems, you can actually play Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear on there. Whoa! You're not supposed to be in this game. You look like shit in 8-bit, by the way. Can you just let me do my review? You'll see that Sonic on Game Gear is just an 8-bit version of Sonic the Hedgehog. You start out in Green Hill Zone, but there are some differences. Look, I skipped the whole level just by rolling downhill and holding right on my controller. It's really that easy, and yes, I know that's not fair. Rather than playing special stages to get the 6 Chaos Emeralds, they are hidden on the regular stages themselves. Some would say they are easier to get this way. Well, I tend to agree with them, but I had no idea how to get the 6th emerald. You pretty much had to avoid playing the last level at all. Just take this alternate route underneath the flying ship, and then you can finally get the, the emerald that you desperately want. I had no idea the third emerald was underneath this area here. The bosses are different in this game. The first boss is probably the easiest boss in Sonic history. Zone 2 is Bridge Zone instead of Marble Zone. It's a nice zone with some calm music. The Chaos Emerald here is way too easy to get, by the way. But then Act 2 betrays what Sonic stands for. It's a moving screen level. Sonic is a platforming game where you want to run fast. But you can't go fast if you are restricted to where the screen is taking you and the pace the screen is going, which is rather slow. The boss here is rather easy, just make sure he aims his shots the wrong way, otherwise they are hard to dodge. Instead of Spring Yard Zone, we have Jungle Zone. Despite how limiting it is for you to move fast here, I enjoy the zone. The platforming is fun and there are multiple ways to go. Robotic this time tries to drop balls on you. Well, they kind of look like rolling pulleys in a way, but yeah, they're just balls, I guess. Each boss you fight in this game, you have no rings. So be sure not to hit Robotnik when a ball is right underneath him, or else you're dead. Labyrinth Zone is still here, so yes, you have to worry about drowning. This time without the terrifying drowning song. Just make sure you notice the numbers. In this version of Sonic 1, you actually get to fight Robotnik underwater. Luckily you can't actually drown here. Jeez. Imagine having to hit Robotnik 8 times while trying not to drown. Scrap Brain Zone comes 5th instead of 6th in this game. It's not anywhere near as hard as the Genesis counterpart, but there are some challenges. Challenges such as trying to figure out where to go. There is no boss here. You're just chasing Robotnik once again, getting outrun by his fat ass, and that's it. Next zone. Sky Base is the last zone. Act 1 is pretty challenging if you're not careful. 
there are lots of opportunities to fall to your death, and make sure to pay attention to those crazy lightning lines we're finally placed. They're everywhere. At Act 2, I just avoid dealing with the level itself so I can go after the final chaos symbol. Don't worry, I'll make this up to you later on in the video. Now, the final boss can be really hard if you haven't figured out his pattern and how to avoid his heat-seeking projectile. But once you figure that out, it's a piece of cake. So since I have all six of the Chaos Emeralds, I get the good ending where Sonic brings out the Chaos Emeralds and clears the dark clouds over the island. Now there is one more game I'd like to cover. Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Master System. I have this downloaded to my Nintendo Wii, by the way. I was convinced by the description of this game on the Wii Shopping Channel that this was exclusive to the Master System, but it's basically the same game as the Game Gear version. However, there are some noticeable differences between both games. It's 8-bit, just like the Game Gear version, but Sonic actually has better facial features. The first boss is more challenging just because you can't reach him by just jumping. You have to wait for him to come down. Other noticeable differences include some Chaos Emeralds being in different areas and some other objects being in different areas. The boss of Bridge Zone is noticeably different. While doing the same thing as the Game Gear version and having the same attacks, the simple fact the bridge isn't here makes this boss quite different. In Jungle Zone, it's easier to see where the Chaos Emerald is because the screen shows more. It's not zoomed in as much as the Game Gear version, so by just looking down right here, you can see the third Chaos Emerald. In the Master System version, at Jungle Zone Act 2, it goes all Castlevania, where if, if you go up, you're fine, but once you go down, you die. I enjoy the Castlevania games, but it's such a pain in the ass to just die by just going down just a little bit. Now, I told you I'd make up for skipping the last level and just getting the Emerald. Now, I'll actually play the level. Being that you are without rings, you would expect this to be pretty hard, especially with the level going up and down, but for the most part, it's not so bad. Robotnik does something a little different here as well. So now he has this wall of electricity, but it eventually runs out of energy for a while. Just make sure you manipulate where these electrical things go, and time their pattern and you'll win. But make sure to dodge the heat seeking projectile as well. Without all the Chaos Emeralds, the dark clouds remain above the island. Overall, all three of these games are awesome. The Genesis version is definitely superior. The level design is better, the bosses are more interesting besides the fourth boss. Of course, the graphics are better being on the 16-bit Sega Genesis. But I like how in the 8-bit versions, how it shows the island you are on and the route you are taking. It's really cool. The epic versions of Sonic 1 start the idea of getting an extra life every 50,000 points. The Genesis version doesn't have that, however ring collecting is better on Genesis. On the 8-bit versions, once you get to 100 rings, you get an extra life. But they start you over at 0 rings, therefore if you just got 100 rings near the end of the stage, you are seriously sacrificing your score, and since scoring 50,000 points gives you an extra life, sometimes you aren't sure whether you want to get the extra life from 100 rings, or avoid resetting the zero rings and lowering your score, making it take longer to get to 50,000 points. How hard could it have been to have the game count to above 100 rings? They have your score count to hundreds of thousands, but they can't have rings count to above 100? In the Genesis version, your rings count above 100, so if you get 100 rings, you get an extra life without dropping to zero. You can get the 200 rings and still keep all the rings and get another extra life. It feels more rewarding getting all the Chaos Emeralds on the Genesis version. Having to finish a stage with enough rings in order to even make it to the special stages and then beat the special stages to get all the Chaos Emeralds is definitely more challenging than, than finding one on the 8-bit version. On the 8-bit versions, you can just memorize where each Emerald is but at least they improve your score at the end when you collect them all. Also, the signposts work differently. In the Genesis version, it's Robotnik on one side and Sonic on the other side, indicating Sonic saved this territory from Robotnik. However, in the 8-bit version, the sign starts with a question mark, and depending on the circumstances, determines what's on the other side. Normally, it will be Robotnik, so then you don't get any bonuses. If you're out of rings, a ring will appear, and you'll get 10 rings. If you lose a bunch of lives, Sonic will appear, and you'll get an extra life. If you collect at least 50 rings, an exclamation point will appear, and you get to play a special stage. 
Being that you already get Chaos Emeralds throughout the normal stages, the special stages serve as a means to collect rings, increase your score, get extra lives, and get continues. What I like about these special stages is that they most represent regular stages in Sonic out of any special stage in Sonic games. They represent them better because you're platforming on the ground like normal, except with a bunch of springs and no enemies. But the Genesis special stages are definitely harder. The Sonic the Hedgehog franchise start off really strong with these titles. I recommend all three of them. As for my ratings, I'll give the original Sonic the Hedgehog on Sega Genesis an 8.5 out of 10. As for the Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear versions, an 8 out of 10. So, with that being said, I recommend you get all three. If you don't want to play both 8-bit versions and get one of the 8-bit versions and the Genesis version because the differences between the two are enough to make them both worthwhile. You want to know how I got these scars? Dude, you have a serious problem with your eyes, man. Here, use these eye drops. Better? Way past cool, huh? Clear eyes. The power to moisturize. Wow.